everybody it is cinnamon cooney your archer but and today we are on this is day four of the 13 days of halloween also known as sherpa ween so this is a yearly event where we do 13 painting every day mostly live um just something different and fun hallway themed and today is my scary spooky wreath but it's not that scary it's kind of cute so I'm going to show you a cool trick on how to make these eyes two different ways. This is a super easy painting, like, like a lot of fun and super easy. If you need any more resources, like the, um, you have to excuse me, my eyes are just acting up, John. But you've got a third one. I've got a third eye. <laughs> I need to put this eye right here. <laughs> I've got some weird eye energy into me. On the mic is my husband, John, and he <gasps> helps us do these live classes ding -ding. by um, making sure that you can see what's going on with the camera, switching camera angles, zooming in, reading questions. If there's an issue with the sound or any of the technology, uh, he, you communicate that with him. You just let him right know, and Attempt. he will get that fixed. And I'm super excited today because today is a pouncer day. Is it? Now, if you don't have a pouncer, I'm going to show you how to do the eyeballs. I'm going to demo one eyeball without a pouncer, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to do eyeballs with pouncers. I love this technique because this particular wreath is something you can paint on a lot of your holiday decor, and mm. I feel like it goes with a lot of different things, including a nightmare before Christmas kind of feel, So, which is kind of what I was going for without getting in any trouble with Tim Burton. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So it is an original piece that you can totally paint and enjoy at home. I'm looking forward How to it. How's everybody feeling? You guys got your coffee? You got your materials? Oh, yes. There's a whole group of people joining in here with oh, us. Oh, good. I know that times there was a bunch of crazy stuff happening with the time, so I appreciate everybody who shows up today. If you check the description below, mm -hmm. there's also a links that you need to know, um, all the social media, our website, and the materials there as well, including exchanges for the colors that we're using so if you're like, oh, I don't really have that color, you'd be like, oh, but I've got the other color that is an exchange and I don't got to worry about that. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to get into it. I'm Are caffeinated. You? I'm excited. I got a nine by 12 surface. I got carbon black, which is like Mars black. I got phthalo green, phthalo blue. I got medium yellow Ozo, which is really like Hansa yellow or cad yellow medium. I got primary red. You would just use like a naphthal red or a cad red medium. A little quinacridone magenta and purple and some titanium white. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm so excited for him. He's so cute. Thank you. Mm. And I'm so excited for this coffee. I don't know how to explain it, but this one came out particularly good. You know, when you just get that right mix mm -hmm. and you're like, that's mm. it. That's the cup of coffee. That's the one I wanted. Uh, for those of you guys that got the coloring book yesterday, the materials came in early. Color. Oh, so we're yes, back right. in biz. I was printing this morning. He was he was up at the crack of dawn printing, and we got signing going and shrink wrapping. So it's going really well, and I'm so excited for you guys to get these in your hands. And we will do um, some live coloring, and I'll show you guys how to use the color pencils that come with them. Because they're watercolor pencils, which is a better colored pencil. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it does two things. <laughs> I like things that do two things. I took a regular brush. <gasps> you know what I did? No, I don't know what you did. I just took my wishes and I put them into the canvas without telling anybody <laughs> what they were. <laughs> you were excited to get into this one. I was excited. This is the painting I'm most excited about. All right. So my wishes were uh, safety and unity for communities around the globe, like uh, people to come back together and uh, get more unified in their self-interest, you know, in their interest together to make things better for everyone. Um, and also, uh, for anyone that's going through anything medical right now, just extra love and support and safety because it's such a harder time to be in the hospital. So we want to say hi, if you're going through anything, we're sending, uh, quick healing vibes and quick recovery. And then this was, this was when I put in, which is if you're a person who feels, uh, lonely and isolated, that uh, we want to just reach out and send some extra love to you and remind you that you're not alone and it can be very isolating during a pandemic. And uh, to reach out, come to these live shows, even if you're not painting, but just come and connect to other live shows and streams. And remember to reach out because this will get better and it's going to pass. It mm. is not a forever thing, though it can feel like it. So those were my wishes. Well, I think been... it's easy to get in a sense that things are forever. I've got a couple of great questions that have come oh, up. Oh, I here. love it. So one of them was... Um... 
what's the difference between phthalo green yellow shade or phthalo blue blue shade and what's the difference and why and I was gonna say oh while she's drinking go watch the split color pal palette video okay you go yeah definitely watch my split color palette video but essentially um, when you're in professional paints you'll notice some of them have a shade listed and what that is what that really is is a, what's called a color bias so some blues you might have noticed look a little more like turquoise and some blues look a little more like a cool winter sky mm. and some blues look like the deep Pacific Ocean and that's about the bias that's in that color. So when you have phthalo blue green shade, you have a phthalo blue that is say more of a turquoise, but if you have a phthalo blue red shade, you have a phthalo blue that is biased a little bit to the red. So like it, it, it looks like rust. a deeper one. And the same with the green. If you have phthalo green blue shade, it's a deeper, cooler green. If you have a phthalo uh, green yellow shade, it's a warmer, brighter green. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take some of this yellow, and I'm going to begin just sort of streaking back and forth in the center. I'm just using uh, my big, wide brush. That's all you need to do. And you don't need to be perfect about that. So it just looks like that. It gives you kind of a sense of that. Then I'm going to come in and start mixing some orange. And I'll come right over into that. And I start a little bit with yellow because it's easy to lose some of the brighter oranges. It's so easy to overpower your yellow with your red. I'm just taking my primary red and my, my Azo yellow which is really like a cad yellow. And I'm just going to come in and just do diagonal strokes, making an orange background. I do want some of this to be a little lighter here, just a little bit. But listen, mm. that part is not like the whole painting doesn't hang on this little center light <laughs> in any way. So it, if you lose it, don't freak out. That's, that's my little light. That's your little light? That little light of mine. You're going to let it shine? No, that skull is. I know he's so cute, isn't he? He's, I know skulls are not normally cute, but I really wanted to make sure that this Halloween... But that skull has a little light. He does. He's going to let it shine. He lets it shine. He's a very happy little skull because he lives in Halloween Town. He does. Um, but he's not specifically from the movie. He just has that kind of that feeling and certainly belongs in Art Sherpa Halloween Town. And he greets you right there with that little yeah, light. Yeah, he does. You can see he's it in very, his eyes. He's very visity. <laughs> Peering into your soul. You know, or something and like that. We've actually done a similar technique wreath to this, but we did Christmas balls instead. So <laughs> the technique translates, is all I'm saying. You can see I'm just making this sort of streaky diagonal background. And what happens here is that the red is a little, the orange is a little deeper on the outside. You really see it's very streaky. It's very streaky, and it's supposed to be oh, very, it's very streaky. It's very fuzzy, too. Let me make that focus. Oh, Don't you, fuzz it. There it is. Streak you can see it. Focus. So I'm getting a little water. Very I get streaky. just a little oh. bit on the edge of my bristles. I don't want to overload the brush. If you're having any trouble with your brush, the way the water gets into it or the load gets into it, I uh, made a video about how to fix the beginner's biggest mistake. It's like 10 minutes, and it will really troubleshoot many, many of your first painting problems. So if you're like painting along, you're like, man, I am just struggling with my tools. It may be just the ticket to help you. You got to fix the thumbnail. I think the thumbnail doesn't really explain to people what it is. <laughs> mm. I got to fix it. But it's a really helpful video that everybody is having any trouble getting brush off their paint, off their brush could use. All right. Look at that. There we got that in. Boom. That looks good. Streaky background, which, by the way, this works for a lot of things. <laughs> and the technique will work for a lot of things. So if you have trouble getting that blended keyhole of light and dark, sometimes this is a little more attainable when you're new to painting. Always wash out your brushes thoroughly. Don't leave them in water because uh, brush makers are crazy people and they use wood for the handles. With it just... I don't have any feelings about that at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to sip my coffee. Well, Irene just got here, and she brought the donuts and Thank the cookies. Thank you for bringing the, the donuts. Cupcakes. I need the donuts and cookies. And oh, cupcakes. cupcakes. And cupcakes. Donuts, all, cookies, and cupcakes. All of them. You're invited to the party anytime, Irene. You can come back. <laughs> anytime. 
Uh, so, all right, I am loving today. Darcy wants to make sure that she hopes all is well with us. We're shipping the coloring books globally, aren't we? Um, yes, but you have to kind of email because your global shipping, like let's say you're in, um, yeah. you know, Bangladesh versus Okinawa versus Ireland versus, versus Hawaii. You know, of, Hawaii. I mean, it's almost versus like down the street. <laughs> Alaska is almost its own country. It's so far away. For a post it is. But luckily. You got to be a brave you, mailman to deliver mail. If you're a person who delivers mail, actually, if you're a person who delivers mail. The United States Postal Service, I want to say thank you so much. As we come into the holiday season, we are so depending on you for so much that goes on with our families and our joy, and even more now with COVID. And we just appreciate everything that you do to get mail around. And if you live in another country and you have a postal service, I send thanks to them too, but I don't know everybody's name. But I have equal thanks in my heart because it's a big deal to serve your community. We use the United, the yeah. United States Postal Service as our preferred shipper. The United States Postal Service is our preferred shipper, and we stand with them. Yes, we do. We do. They All right, I'm going to dry my canvas. Okay. As you do. And if you're drying your canvas and have something to do, click on that subscribe button down below. Because then you can get all of the cool stuff that we do for free here on YouTube. And if you click the bell and then click all, then you get this little notification when we go live and do things like that. So you will never miss anything. But if you were concerned about that, you could also, let me see if I can push this button. Psh, psh, there you go. You can send, I have to make cinnamon disappear for a second. You can send the art Sherpa to 33222 and that will get you a text message notification when we go live. So that's kind of handy. You can get those. Um, if you're interested in our scheduling and anything we do, you can check out theartsherpa.com where we have a calendar of all the events we do. Oh, yeah, definitely use all caps if you have a question during the live show because that's how we see it because y'all chat really fast. I mm -hmm. miss a lot. I, and just so you know, I'm never ignoring anybody's question. Uh, even the team is like, I'll answer any question. I really, I do tend to answer questions, even some of the punchy ones. Uh, so if I skip something or I miss something, it really is just that the chat is scrolling and I don't see it. Caps does really help. Uh, oh, uh, Sueb Hostick said, Dunn just bought it. Who's with me? Let's all buy one and support the Sherpa. <laughs> thank well, thank you, you very much. You know. We do appreciate it. We really do. But I'm hoping that you guys really love the coloring book as well. We, we actually, I'll let Cinnamon explain what she's doing. Guys... I am going to take a chalk tool and give myself a little circle guide because Reese are kind of in a circle. So I use chalk. You guys, are they able to see this one? Mm, um, I had been very using light. colored pencil. It's, it's but... very light. I, mean, I, can, I can give it a little. I'm just trying oh. to make sure that there's some room. I don't want the circle to go to the edge and I, I want to leave room for my skull. So it's just about placement. And the nice thing about the chalk, and I'll try to just circle, circle, circle so you can see it. I'll just go till you can see it. How's that sound? You circle, circle, dot, till dot. You can see it. Now I got my Sherpa shot. <laughs> circle, circle, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> That's the thing now. I'm going to go with that. Uh, it's Teresa, so funny. Uh, for those of okay. you that are excited, that Oya, uh, the storm goddess... Right? I think she's actually the basis for Storm from X-Men, if I remember correctly, which is why she made our big art quest. She's just been scheduled up. I have to... Yeah, she's super multi-parter. We're going to be with her for a minute. There's so much orange being reflected off the surface in front of you, I had to color correct you. Really? Yes, it was like you were sitting in front of a fire. <laughs> it's like you do, you turn orange. I turn a little I... orange. Well, you know, sometimes I am a little orange, Well, right? I fixed it now. But see, watch, when I go back to normal, it's like... See how orange you get real quick? Oh, oh yeah. So I had to fix it. Yeah. So like, definitely, um, Mika uh, Michaela Reese says, where can I go for wishes? We have a um, group on Facebook, the Art Trip of Facebook group. And in there, there's a file. I don't know if you guys are familiar with files. If you're in my Facebook group, please check out the file section. There is like amazing resources for you that are free. Every acrylic paint company listed, all my favorite paints, everything you need to know about cadmium or why I don't use torches, safety tips, resource information, and uh, uh, of course, the uh, file to do wishes. So you definitely always want to check that out. Now I'm going to take this tool, this, 
is an arch of a cat's tongue. You could also use a round brush like this. We're just gonna make our little full stroke leaf and we're gonna go around on our wreath and make the first part of a wreath, which is black. I'm gonna dip this in water, drag off the extra. Come here and I'm gonna load amply with black paint because right? I want a nice coverage of black paint. And when I wanna thin my black paint, I go one drop at a time. I don't bring a lot of water into it because you can over thin it very quickly. And how this stroke works, and I'm gonna let John come in close. I'm gonna okay, take a I'll minute see. so you guys can really see these go in. Because these strokes are easy to do when you understand them. So I've got my brush, as you can see, it's not flat, it's on the side. I'm gonna come down and I press and pull and it makes like a little comma. That's how we do these leaves. If I wanna go the other way, I press and pull. If I want to go this way, I press and pull. And I come here when I want them to be bigger, I press harder. And I'm going to make a nice, gorgeous wreath with lots of leaves. It does help, I find, sometimes to turn your canvas. And so I may be turning as I go. So I'm, I will have to allow John to catch up to me. But you just want to give some, some little wreathy loves. You know, and I kind of zipper the center and then pull out thicker bits to fill out my wreath. You guys can see. Now I'm going to be going around kind of counterclockwise. Now I've demoed that and hopefully John's going to be able to mm -hmm. sort of uh, keep up with me. It's no problem. Just kind of go do your thing. Do my thing. You guys can see that pull stroke there. So Lynn was asking, mm. if someone saw this hanging on your wall and was like, I must have it, Lynn, let, let me buy it from you. Uh -huh. What would you say to that? I don't know. That's really you. John is the one who is very, uh, he, John apparently owns the paintings. <laughs> well, what I mean is, if, so Lynn, Lynn's out there in our, she's in our audience. And oh, she like painted, if she was selling her painting. Well, so she has painted a beautiful art Sherpa tutorial. Okay, so and here's it, the deal. In a private sale, Lynn, enjoy, right? Have your moment. Oh, awesome. Enjoy it. Um, any private sales between yourself, you know, if, you, if you're a charity or whatever, that's super cool. If you do something in a public space, like a local craft fair or online on Etsy or on uh, American Art, I ask that you don't make prints or reproductions. And I ask that you credit uh, us as the uh, resource, the inspirational the resource. Design. Yeah. Yeah, it could be like a little card tucked into the back of the canvas. It's just something lots of people know. The original design came from the Archer. Mm -hmm. We right? want to help you And if you, you want to teach it, we do ask that you guys get a license from us, from our labs department. Which we have a licensing group on our website. You can go check that out too. We have all the things. All the things. And more things every day. And more things every day. So, yeah. No, I don't mind that at all. Now, understand that's just me. Every single art teacher has a different policy on this, not just online, but in mm -hmm. person. And you can actually uh, not always do that with every class you take. So, Like say you were to go to Art of the Carolinas, not every class you would take at Art of the Carolinas, would you be able to sell that artwork or even publish it online? Right. Life is its own uh, turntable today. Making a nice little wreath. So hopefully you guys enjoy this little wreath thing. This works for spring wreaths and winter wreaths and everybody wreath. Whatever wreath you need. Mm -hmm. I like to bring little bits in. Some leaves big, some leaves small. Just come along and do that. And remember, wreaths are, you know, they're made of natural objects. So sometimes they're messy, right? Sometimes. It could be, those could be feathers from a crow. They could, actually, it would be very easy to convert these into crow feathers. I would just use the phthalo blue and green to create the highlights. All the crows out there are saying, hey, why don't, don't pick don't on a raven? Don't go pluck a crow, they're very smart. <laughs> go pick on the ravens. They're also very smart. Leave all the birds that are magpies, the whole bit. Just leave them all alone because they're super smart, self-aware birds. They have, salt, they have synthetic Feathers you can Dude, get at the local craft store. they can solve puzzles, I think, with throw a human a loop. So <laughs> I watch too many documentaries. Okay. So when you get the basic wreath done, then you can come through. And if you're like, oh, we need, a, we need a little bit of extra leaf interest here and there, you just add that where it would be appropriate. 
something. Like, oh, I want it to be thicker here or take it all in. And for the next part, you want this to be dry so you can do the purple highlight. Oh, Beth says she just ordered the coloring book for her granddaughter. Oh, I hope she loves it. Make sure you watch for it. We're going to do some live uh, paint color alongs on Facebook. Uh, probably uh, more during the day. So if you've got kids that are in homeschool, it'll work for that. It will work for that. I am doing a double brush washout. And the reason I'm doing two cup washouts is because black paint gets into everything. And I don't want to make the colors dull. Mm. I want to be colorful. All right. Let's dry this painting. All right. So, all right. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. I really do appreciate it. You guys make our day. Just it is one of the most awesome things to be come out here and hang out with you guys on a what is today? Is this is it? Is it a Sunday? I can never tell what day it is. It's Sunday, October fourth, the fourth day of Halloween, which is a good day. Tomorrow's a Monday. You know what? Mondays aren't as dreaded as they used to be. You know, well. For some of us, I think, as I wax philosophical about work days in the before time when there were work days. What? what? I was just thinking, you know, it's a Sunday, and Mondays Sunday. used to be dreaded, but that was in the before time when we had to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the before time. I remember hugging people. <laughs> shaking it was nice. hands. I, I, ne I didn't realize I would miss shaking hands and hugging so much. Yep. Just oh, so much. All right. So okay. for this part, we're going to do our purple leaves, but mm -hmm. I don't want to have to paint underneath my skull a whole bunch. I'm going to show you how to do him just, just real fast. And I'm going to take my number. This is a number 12 silver white round, but you can just take any round brush you have. This was just the one that had been in the uh, kit. Now I'm going to come here to my wreath. Right about here, I'm just going to make a circle. Mm -hmm. And then I like to come on the inside, and I do sort of a little S-curve. And come around and do an opposing S-curve, sometimes a little longer. And the teeth is sort of a painting trick. Um, and I'll show you that. I'm going to do a little white. And the reason I'm going to go ahead and put a little white down is painting white over black, even if you're painting pro paint, is still a multi-coat job. <laughs> so getting one on there to allow it to dry while you're putting in your purple leaves, you won't be sorry you did it. Mm -mm. You won't be sorry at all. So Yasmin was asking, there's some other stuff in the box in the Halloween box. Yeah. Is there, some, is there some plans for some of that stuff? No, that was just some extra enjoyment for you guys to, to use and do. Don wanted me to like do a whole bunch of stuff with it, but I was like, baby, <laughs> I'm really busy. <laughs> but we figured, what we really did is we figured that you may have kids home, that you might be, you know, decorating yourself or that you just might need a little more joy in the box. Like 2020 was calling for just a little extra fun. So if you did the Halloween box and you saw the little extra goodies in there, mm -hmm. it was just to help bring a little holiday joy to you and, and brighten your day. Because it's, it's just, you know, it's important to try to keep up a bright and optimistic space. I'm going to come here and make this little horn. Boop, boop. Boop. I love his little horn. I'm so glad everybody liked the extras. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Now, I would like to see inside there, there were two unique canvases, you could say. Yes. I would like to see what people did with those two unique he canvases. He was hoping that you guys would paint the masks and post and share with him. Those were... Those were some interesting and unique ones. They Those were. Would be, they would be good to see what people did for Halloween with them. I think so. Oh, and what you and your kids do, or what you and your furry friends do. Just mm -hmm. whatever you, whoever you're cohabitating with right now. Oh, Diane says, I wish breathing without a mask. And <laughs> Suki Sue is sending us a virtual hug. And I, I, but I love that Yasmin was looking at that. It's like glasses for other things. We'll have to do that at some point. 
Mm -hmm. Like maybe that'll be an extra like uh, next year or what we'll do is how about we put an extra memory stick in there? That'd be oh, like a bonus for yeah. just the boxes. Now I'm going to put in his little bigger fangs and what I got, I'm going to let John really get there and all I'm doing is going to just curve a little tooth up. Curve it up. And then I'm going to come here and curve another little tooth up. And they can be short. We're just making little teethers. Mm. I mean, he's friendly, but he still has teeth. He lives in Halloween Town. <laughs> so, a skull's got to eat. A skull's got to eat. <laughs> Not apples, my friends. Not apples. You know how hard they it eat is. eat internet trolls. <laughs> <laughs> so on this, I'm going to get my cat's tongue back. We're going to put a little purple accent on the leaf. I think you guys will like that. I got to catch up to the chat. Uh, if you can paint this, uh, I put Jack's face in the paintings as gothic manner. Uh, Jack Skellington's face would be very good. And you may have missed earlier that Kristen said happy that she she wanted to say thank you for for a happy, relaxing, and creative Sunday. You are so welcome. And I've been talking with John about this as we go. We're going to try to continue to be here for everyone as things progress and develop. So if they get more stressful, mm -hmm. we're going to put more lives up so that you guys have a place or more videos or just things to help you uh, be distracted. <laughs> so that it's easier to be present in the things that are happening in your local life. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to quiet the outside world down enough to do things. That's actually one of the reasons why I really liked your book, was that it's a very um, soothing, pattern-based kind of yeah thing to do. Well, I so uh, my friend Stephanie Bergeron. I got to plug the book. She <laughs> got to plug the book. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's really did a, a coloring yeah. book with mandalas, meditation mandalas, and I really liked it. And we talked, and we decided to collaborate and adapt um, 25 of the more popular art Sherpa designs into the coloring book in a mandala. So it is very mm -hmm. therapeutic and calming. It's See, just all calming circles. I wasn't just gratuitously plugging mm -mm. our book. That you can buy on our store right now. It definitely the current level of stress definitely helped motivate us to just really push <laughs> forward and get stuff more urgently done. So you can see how I just take the quinacridone magenta and the, this purple here and a little bit of white. The look at how the brush is just loosely mixed, you know, and we're just coming in and adding a little bit of that pop of color over the black, you know. Just to help things feel a little bit better, right? Yeah. Now, there were some folks asking about the Halloween kits. Mm -hmm. I do we believe, are sold out. Yeah, I do believe we are sold out. I saw, like, a, I saw a pile of what I thought was six or seven of them behind the door, but I just don't know if those were boxes that have been unlabeled but have been sold or, but yeah. I'll. If, I, think, I think the team said that they were all gone. I think so, too. But we'll go back and double check. Next this. year, we will try to make sure we have more and even more stuff. More stuff in the box. And if I can find enough parts, I'll put some together and put them up there. But we, I think we're just out of supplies to make those. We are going to try to do one for the 12 days of Christmas. Mm -hmm. There'll be more Slash box kits coming. Generalized out. winter holiday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slash and, generalized winter theme paintings. And we've got some uh, homeschool art supply kits coming as well. We do. And I think Those you guys coming. will like that. So I'm going to dry this as well, John. You dry that. I am. I'm tipping the canvas up, guys, just so I don't get the hair dryer on my paint because I don't want to speed dry my paint. And if you, if you were thinking, man, this would be a great time for John to plug that book, you're right. But instead, what I'm going to say is you should not use heat when drying your surface um, because the heat will actually cause... Uh, a lot of problems. From the very least, it'll make it sticky, and it can make your uh, brush drag and lift the layers of paint underneath it. But it can also uh, cause color shift, which is, it can cause, now it's more in student grade paint than it is in pro grade, 
propane. But in student grade paints especially, it can cause it to uh, lighten or darken a little bit depending on the pigment they use. Um, but it generally can cause problems. So you should avoid that. What are we avoiding? Heat. Heat. <laughs> 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 Get my big round brush again and do that second coat of white paint that we mm. discussed. I'm going to get clean you... water because I don't want my white paint to be dirtied and muddied and grayed out by all my paint pigment water. Ooh. Uh, Valerie says, I recently started two paintings two weeks ago, and I've learned so much from your videos. Thank you for your amazing teachings. I've improved so much in just a short time. And then Gothic Manor says, so on a dry or cool setting, it's probably best that mm -hmm. you do your hair dryer on a dry or cool setting. The, you know, there's a lot of things that acrylic does. Um, it certainly softens in the heat. And lets you know a little bit about leaving paintings in the back of your car. Mm -hmm. And when it's softer, you know, acrylic paintings are more likely to become tacky or stick to each other or be problematic. And it makes it harder when you're doing chalking because the lines can leave indentions that are permanent or more difficult to get out. I have to say that my, my paintings are tacky whether they're dry or not. You're so funny. He's a very good artist, actually. He just won't show you. I paint I'm vehicles. I'm fully aware of what I did there. <laughs> <laughs> I paint vehicles. He's actually they, a very good artist. He won't show you. He must have an octane rating. I think there's one John painting on the channel, which is John painted a Murloc from Game of Thrones. Oh my from gosh. From War, uh, World of Warcraft. I did. Come in and just add a second coat to your teeth. So you see, this just that second coat makes a big difference, doesn't it? Now, if you're painting very inexpensive paint, maybe you're three or four coats. Guess what? That's okay. It doesn't mean you're bad at painting. It just means your pigment load in your paint is light, and that happened before you got there, so you can't hold yourself responsible. Ooh, you know, you could turn... Um... You could what? I was just reading here in chat, like using luminous paint. Uh, Linda was going to use some luminous, frosty demon paint to make the face look a little... Sparkly. Yeah, you could do glow in the dark. Uh, it, Lucas uh, Acrylic does uh, Flora White. They're the only Flora White I've seen. And they also have a glow in the dark paint. Martha Stewart has a glow in the dark paint. And those are basically invisible until they're exposed to light and the lights go out. Hmm. So you don't even see them. If you ever saw that YouTube video of the paintings that had two paintings? That's what that is. Okay, so this is a pouncer. Actually, I'll show you one way. I'm going to show one here with just a brush, and then the rest of them I'm going to do pouncers. So if you just had a brush, you would come here and you would just paint a nice little circle, like you do, right? About this big in diameter. <laughs> paint your nice little circle. You can do it like that, or you can come in and get your pouncer right into the paint. I twist back and forth and get a nice load. You can see that load. The whole pouncer is covered. I'm going to come here, and you just twist little eyeballs. Is that little foaminess okay? Yeah, it's bubbles? totally fine. What that is is that as the pouncer, I'll show you how to fix it. Oh, hold on. Let me get that butt. The, the, there, oh, there it goes. I'll show you totally how to fix it. But this is a great way, especially if you do a lot of Halloween decorations or if you're doing them by hand. Oh, and a bunch more eyeballs today. Now, if you have foaminess, you just come back and go over, and you can kind of lightly... Oh, they're a little popping away anyway. Yeah, they do. Okay. But you saw me paint the circle. I saw you. I saw you do it. You saw me paint the circle. Now it's very important to to keep your sponges in water till you can rinse them out, mm -hmm. because you don't want the acrylic paint to dry on that. Can Can I say what helps get the soap out of? Sherpa Peltzers? Mm. Sherpa Soap. Yeah, but we don't have any for sale right now on the website. 
soon. <laughs> just maybe stop talking about it to the new batch. It's ready. <laughs> but it does. It is the work. best on the planet, but shh. Can you hate my coffee, sweetheart? Yeah, I'll take some questions from the chat. Say hi to everybody. Dorothy Radmaker says, what can be used to separate or put between each painting for travel and storage? So, Dorothy, here's my thing on travel and storage. Um, I think we used butcher paper, didn't we? Uh, yeah. So when we went to travel, what we did is we, I, I can't build individual museum crates for all my paintings. I have thousands and thousands, and I'm not kidding, thousands. I think we're in like 4,000 paintings. So um, I got to make a video of just putting it all up. And that is excluding what I have weirdly sold or given away along the way. Uh, so when we when we moved, we had to get everything here. And what we did is we got nice book boxes that were, you know, fit it. And then for the 16 by 20s, we got the bigger ones. And we made sure that there was a sheet of butcher paper between the um, canvases. And we also did not pack them particularly tightly. We made sure that there was room to go. The other thing that you really got to look at is the temperature of the paintings during the moving situation because as I mentioned heat softens acrylic painting so if it's hot enough um, you can even get a, a acrylic painting to say stick to tissue I had someone send me a beautiful acrylic painting but it was so hot in the summer that the tissue had just completely melted into the surface now varnishing a good varnish uh, can help reduce that because varnish is not as susceptible to that softening in the heat as acrylic paint itself is. That's a thing that you can do, but you want those well cured and finished before, and you wouldn't rely on just varnish. You would still want to space them. In an ideal world, you would create a little grooved holder that where nothing actually touches the acrylic painting itself, and there was a half inch of air between each. And there is an article on how to do that on the justpaint.org website. And if you haven't bookmarked the JustPaint.org website, please do. It is an amazing resource. Not just professional artists use it. Everyone should use it. If you have a question about paint, nobody is as committed about answering those questions as Golden Artist Colors. And that is a free resource that they give to you and other artists. So bookmark it, put it in that toolbar, and visit often. I do. And I am so glad I do. I learn things all the time. Mm. I have to dry this. Do you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sip my coffee first. It's a good thing to do. All right. So have I missed anything? What causes the foaminess? That's just the pouncer kind of lifting and pulling the paint. And, you know, it's just that engagement uh, to the load, but it'll come down. Now, you do have something called foaming in acrylic paint where you break down the, the surficants and sulficants in the paint and you can get foaming, which is a different problem. Totally. That's similar in effect. Guess what I have to do? You need to dry. I need to dry. So, while she's drying that, yeah, just make sure you get it thoroughly dry between layers. That way you're not going to lift and you're not going to have your, uh, these subsequent layers get muddy or kind of pick up the, the layer underneath there and be, you know, a little bit icky. So just make sure you're thoroughly dry between your layers. Between them. My cord on my hair dryer keeps getting caught in these brushes. We'll it's have to adjust aggravating. that. aggravating. We'll adjust it after the show. Damaging. I'm going to have to reshape all those filaments. So <gasps> I'm going to go through and I'm going to put some colors in my eyes. In I'm going to put some colors. Now I have, I, can, I have luxury and then I have two of my mid-range uh, sized um, sponges. And you can see I've had this one for, for well, several years. And this is how it looks after a tremendous amount of use. <laughs> Comes Starts like this though, so. Managed expectations, right? <laughs> and I'll start out with the green. And for the green, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my yellow and I'll come stamp it over here. And then I'm going to get a little bit of my green into that. And you can see that it's, it's a bit loosely mixed. And the, the goal is to have a somewhat streaked. There we go. That's a perfect load for that. And I'm going to come in the middle of some of these and make a little eyeball. Oh, yeah. There we go. 
These are the green eyes. And if you had to make a lot of eyeballs, this technique is your friend. Mm. It is your friend, but you can see how the two colors really help that become a nice green eye. Definitely put that sponge in water so it doesn't get dried on there. And now I'm going to do the blue. The double color I do for the blue is actually with white. So I bring a little white into that spin. And that, this is really good for bubbles and everything too. So this is a good technique because we're going to use this for our cauldron or which is cauldron as well. Ah. If you move the dot towards the front, you can change the direction the eye is looking. Like I'll show you that up here. So if you put it up here, close to your edge, when you put the center in there, it can make it the eyeballs look like they're looking around, which is a fun little touch that you can do with your eyeballs. Again, putting that there. Now, my last one that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my black into my small, small, small sponge. If you'll notice in the Art Sherpa Pouncers, um, we have a concave um, indention for your finger to be calm, and we have a hole in the opening for you to be able to pop your brushes out, your foam out, in case you are a hard pouncer. It will help you. But sometimes we pounce enthusiastically, sir. Mm. Um, Callie Beasley, did Cinnamon do a taster session for Lifebook 2021? I did. It is a happy cat. It is so cute. But um, in all candor, we did not have our kid together on time. And so I think we're the last class. <laughs> Which please, please, please tell Tamara uh, that you love having me in the Lifebook um, tasters and Lifebook. Because uh, I have been a little bit of a pain, I think. Just uh, my crazy has gotten away from me in my life recently. And I really love doing it. I think it's a wonderful program. If you wanted a sneak peek to that, I sent that in the newsletter. It's at the bottom of the last few newsletters. You can see how I place, like, if I want the eyeball to be looking in a different direction, I just put that. Pupil there, and it changes the focus. Kind of look like my eyes right now, wandering all over the place. <laughs> Your eyes don't wander. Meow. <laughs> it does right now. All right. Now, I am going to use these two pouncers, but I'm going to make one eye bigger after I do it. I like to do, if you've been with me for a while, you'll notice that a lot of times in my cute stuff, I like to make two different size eyes. It's like a thing I have going on. So there we go. How, what do you guys think of that? I'm and loving that. Abdurhamen Malik says, hello, everyone. It's been a while. And they are back. And, and then I've, Ivy says, is this live right now? I think you just figured out it is. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's live. I don't know if we're lively enough, <laughs> but we are live. Look, I'm going to be honest. I'm never going to be as good as the bear stream. Nobody can compare to bears fishing for salmon at a river. That is the most entertaining live stream on the planet. And after that, I'm pretty okay. You're pretty awesome. I'm pretty awesome. I'm not bear awesome, but I own that. I recognize that, you know, but I'm still pretty cool. Uh, so, oh, uh, Malik's school had started, but I tried to come to the lives. Lots of work to do. It really is. And Alexi Rose says, this is looking really cool. And then Ivy is like, one V is it Ivy? Ivy. I'm sure I'm reading that right because even though it's one V, it, I feel like it's Ivy. Mm. But maybe I have just been uh, scrolling TikTok too much lately. <laughs> or perhaps it's a mathematical <laughs> formula. Like could be that as well. Like Elon did. Um, Gothic matter. Do you sell paint on your site? Yes, um, but you go to it. So we have two shops. You, we have the one shop on the site, and sometimes we have paint there for sale, like kits and things like that, coloring books. You'll see an acrylic April tab on our landing page for the www.theartrip.com. If you go there, there's a shop there. I have a kit of paint with my basic colors that you've got to have pre-hand picked out and two watercolor kits that you can get at a pretty smoking deal. And 
keep keep an eye on theartsherpa.com because there's some cool new oh, stuff coming. Oh, dude, we're working on some stuff. You know how it's been like nothing, 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 and then it's going to be like all the things. All of them. So all I do here is I just go over this one eye that I already had, and I make it just a little bit uh, bigger because I like two size eyes. The next thing I do is I'm going to do an upside down heart, which is his little nose. If you ever didn't know how to do a skull nose, it's an upside down heart. Hmm. There you go. And now you'll never not see it ever again. This will ruin bones for you. Uh, Cinnamon, you are 31 of 32 lessons on life book. Excellent. Second to last. <laughs> <laughs> They're an amazing team, and I really appreciate the unicorns over there at uh, the Lifebook Willowing team. They're incredible. We're and treating me really, really sometimes. well. You're saying check the shop daily, says Callie. And daily, well, my well. I would say here. I tell you what. If if you're a patron, I'm gonna email you guys when I put something cool in there. Um, and if you're on the newsletter. You'll, You'll be it. right after the patrons. Yeah, that's pretty much how that works. And then, and then you know, after that, you can. Now, a lot of times the reason why I will tell I'm the patrons. I'm going to outline my little skull here with black guys. A lot of times we'll let the patrons have access to stuff that we're not quite sure is ready for the general public. Like, <laughs> that we're testing. We're testing it. Like, testing you know, it. Making sure that it is what we think it is. You want to outline your teeth in black too, help define them. So, in the toe of my brush, I'm using that number 12 round again, just on the toe of the brush. One could say, we only sell our junk to the people who really love us. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Since you really love us, here's the beta. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I'm making these little curve lightnings just to show the little twist on the horns. That's not that undoable. While this is having itself a rest in a thing, the eyes should be dry enough for the mm. next part, which Are is you, their reflection. Wait, wait, don't, you should dry them because I can see the moisture on them. On They're the eyes? moist. Oh, those eyes. Okay, I thought yeah. you meant the center eyes. No, I'm going to let the center eyes. Sometimes okay. I dry with the hair dryer and sometimes I dry by giving time. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to go around. All right. Oh. These are just little reflections. These are the wet reflections in the eye that happen. When light hits them. And it sort of just gives them an even more realistic eye look. Mm. Again, if you had to paint like a bunch of these all over your wall, this is the technique, man. You'd be done in a minute. Just a little bit of a reflection. There we go. We did a martini glass with eyeballs as olives once. We also did similar rocks huh? as We did rocks as eyeballs. We did rocks as eyeballs. We haven't released that in a while. Uh, but we love all the stuff beta, says Kimberly. And uh, Blavita one says, Hi, Simon. I just finished working on your whimsical bohemian tree. My third painting ever. I don't know how, but I started off on a tree kick. Trees happy. It Trees. happened to me. Trees hug you back. They do. Like, we went to do some fan videos, and all of a sudden, I was like eight tree videos in, and I'm like, what are we going to do with this? So we made a bunch of five-minute videos. What you do I, with all these trees? There's going to be um, some Sherpa shorts uh, where you don't see a live schedule. That's where it's going to be Sherpa short at the regular time that we go, which is, the, which is noon Eastern. Um, and they're going to cover really awesome techniques that, Again, if you're doing a lot of crafting for the holidays, you're doing a lot of making your own stuff and you're embellishing or you're, you know, really new to painting or, or you're painting with kids, these are really fun things to learn and will pay back dividends every single Halloween because you can use these techniques on your shoes, on your costumes, on your walls, on gift bags, on decor, on everything because they're cool, spooky techniques. Mm -hmm. All right. I am going to dry this eye. All right, you dry it. Because it just insists. Oh, there we go, drying the surfaces. And it's good to dry your surfaces, especially what I was trying to say earlier is make sure you dry the eyes, especially those little black eyes there before you put any white on top of them because if they're not thoroughly dry, and I mean thoroughly because you can have 
inside here. I'm going to cross zoom so you can see. You cross zoom. If you look down inside here, inside these little puddles, see that little puddle? I'm going to zoom in. You can see it's dry. Ah, no, it's not. See, I'll show you. That's what I'm talking about. See that little puddle right there? Hold on. Hold on. Baby, we have a uh, profanity filter on the channel um, because we have a lot of kids that come and watch from around the world. So, mm. um, well, I do totally use adult language myself, and I think it's super fun, and, and we do it in the patronage. Uh, the filters catch you automatically here. So we're not silencing you, and we do see you, but the system will um, grab that and time you out. So I'm super sorry. But I do appreciate okay. you coming, and when you come back, just like, you know, emoji so the you poopy. See and the... it won't catch you. Just emoji. Just go poopy, 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 and it'll be fine. Okay. Do you see? Do you see that little that little dollop right there? Yeah. It's still wet underneath it. Is it? You think? I oh, see. there it is. I totally Whoop, there called it. Is. it. Okay. So that's what I was talking about. You want to make sure that those things are thoroughly dry because if you're going along and you're painting and that all of a sudden. Um, is you your your uh, brush goes across that? It'll pick up the white paint, and make it totally icky. So, okay. Okay, this is really cool. Levita One says, "Thank you for sharing your talent and joy of life with me. I love painting with you and hubby. Love to you and your family from a Slovenian living in Austria. <laughs> that feels like a show that somebody would do, like a Slo hmm. like Slovenian living in Austria sitcom." <laughs> It does, but then I watch a lot of TV shows from everywhere. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to take the red. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is if the red will even uh, cover. Oh, Lady White Fang. Hi, Lady White Fang. How are you doing today? So I'm going to come in, and we're going to just do an upside-up heart. So it's just pretty much the opposite of the nose. And already I can see that that is not You're going to cover. To put some white down first, huh? I'm going to need to put some white down first. This is a this is true facts. True you gotta facts. Do that. True facts of the skull. <laughs> true facts of the art sherpa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You can use uh, the detail brushes if you're uncomfortable using the Ooh. number twelve. But Yashika sure, has a good um, idea. Huh? Yashika has a good idea. Hmm. She's gonna paint this on a shirt. Oh, that's a good good idea. That is a and good idea. Hank and Nader Gamer. Tankinator Gamer! Says um, hello from Germany. I think um, your moniker is very cool, Tankinator Gamer. I'm guessing he plays World of Tank. I, yeah, actually, you don't know this, but <laughs> John has a history with World of Tanks. I do. I'm not going to tell it. He'll have to tell it while I'm painting in these white eyes. I know the people who, who made World of Tanks, like, well, some of them. Not like it's a big, it's a huge It's a team. huge company. It's a huge company. But I know some people from over there, and we've hung out, and it's cool. I like them. They are very nice people. And one of them is uh, uh, in the 501st, who's in the group. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So that's we, that's, that's how cool. I got recruited in. Uh, Kelly Beasley says, I was just doing an old painting yesterday after trying to fix a spot where it stuck to another canvas. I found one of those pockets. Yeah, that happens. And um, and then, Yasmin, can you do an Adam's Family Live? I don't think we've done Adam's. We have one mm. more Tisha. And we have a Wednesday Adams. So we have two already. You know, um, if you paint fabric, do you need a special medium, says Tina? Um, I have a rainbow hammerhead shark that covers this, but I do suggest GAC 900 because that will keep the paint uh, flexible enough to not peel off and wear off the fabric over time. I mean, you can just paint acrylic straight onto fabric, and you do need to set it in the dryer. And oh, by the way, don't stay in the room because acrylic paint over 120 degrees starts off-gassing formaldehyde. One of the many reasons that I get so upset at torches on paint pours is because it what? starts off-gassing chemicals. Anyways, so you do have to set it, and you do need GAC 900. No fire? No fire. What will I use my flamethrower for? I, other things. Other things. Other things. Not your painting, Acrylic apparently. paint is very toxic when heated. Don't use heat. See, Don't I told you guys. Don't use heat. Told you. Now I can take the red, and you can see it looks very red. That's what you have to do sometimes. Sometimes when you're painting, you'll be like, man, my red isn't covering, or my yellow isn't covering. And the trick to that is always to sort of just paint white underneath. Are the 13 days one hoot or two hoot? 
So pretty much the 13 days are one hoot except the still life, which is going to end up being somewhere between a two and three hoot. And Yashika's got to post her shirt up in uh, on the Facebook group. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Facebook group. We got to see that. That's cool. That would be super great. Do you guys like them red heart eyes? That's how you know he's a loving, a loving skull. And somebody was saying that they were going to do a pumpkin on the wreath, which I think is smart. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a really good idea. I am working on a bunch of palette knife paintings. I'll put up a link to the knives that I'm using uh, later in group. But uh, we're going to be doing some pumpkins and palette knives this year. Do you know why he has love in his eyes? Why does he have love in his eyes? Because you're his soul mate. Did you just really do that for realsies? I'm did a that dad. For realsies, what can he? I say? He dad joked you, and I'm so sorry for that. So tomorrow we're going to be doing a candy corn girl gnome. So she's a gnome, and she's got candy corn fashion, and she's our first girl gnome of mm. the uh, collection. So if you're painting all the gnomes with me, a lady gnome. If you're going to paint all the gnomes, definitely. And there is a gnome playlist because I have so many gnomes now. <laughs> so, like, there's an owl playlist. Um, I'm going to sign this right here. Oh, so, wait, if you are painting uh, the gnomes, definitely come by and catch her because you don't want to miss her in the collection. She will go with upcoming gnomes. And I put some nice curly hair on her. Not to brag, but I have a Bob Ross official palette knife. Actually, Bob Ross's uh, official palette knife is one of the, that is a really good palette knife. If yeah. you're not going to go out and get like an Italian palette knife, um, that is a good palette knife. So if you guys already have the Bob knives, you don't have to go out and get anything new. Or if that's what you have access to, feel confident getting those. Um, sometimes they can get a little, a little metal part that's on them the part here can get a little loose um i'll give you a link to these little rubber handled nonsenses they're pretty terrific you can see i've been using them in painting 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 palette knife and you'll like it palette knife is fun and of course we'll do sherpa shorts to help you guys get ready about how to load how to use how to what are the techniques around palette knives so that you guys aren't you know trying to figure it out during the live painting with me. you got a little pre-practice going yashik is going to share up her shirt on her instagram yeah i told her to go check out our instagram where we have yeah. our reels definitely out there. like do all the tags me in yeah all of it just because it's kind of hard for me i try to see as much as i can on instagram but it doesn't upset me if you're doing my stuff and you want to tag me right on in there it doesn't i don't mind that at all it doesn't it's not weird for me if you're not painting with me and you're just tagging me in because you're trying to get into my community, that's a little weird. But if you paint with me and you're showing me something, please hashtag me, direct tag me, DM me. I never see those, though. There's any way to reach me because I love, I sit down and I love to go through Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, we should oh, get out. We gotta get out of here. Oh, he was the god of painters, and yes, he's gone, yeah. The brush of destiny is in heaven watching down on us. He hangs out with Vincent Van Gogh. They're buddies. They are. Mm-hmm. I think they're besties. I think they're best friends, and they talk about being artists. Artists outside their own time, don't you think, Bob mm. and Bingo? Like, got to be close. I feel so. It's a strong feeling that I have. I bet they pal around and cause trouble. But I have an imagination, so that gets away from me really, really quick. Um, if you're doing Oya, please go by and check the two videos out I put in the playlist to explain to you who she is. If you're not familiar with the African Pantheon, of orishas or gods and the story behind her is super cool and think about it she's the basis of storm on x-men so how mm-hmm. cool is she is a fairy tale the coolest i think i got a little weird there <laughs> guys i love today thank you for relaxing calm down paint it was actually a really chill out paint for me today this is the this is the one i'm super excited about i want to see you guys for candy corn gnome tomorrow good to yourselves it is a hard time remember it's going to get better this isn't forever be good to each other because they're going through it too and i want to see you at an easel really soon